Hey guys, Weeby News here, and today I'm going to be ranking the beta designs of the Danganronpa V3 cast. Yes, I know it's been a while since I have continued the series. Originally I was planning on doing Ultra Despair Girls first, and I still do plan on doing Ultra Despair Girls eventually, but I wanted to do this one first because my memory is just not very good, and it's been a very long time since I played Ultra Despair Girls, and there's another video I really wanted to um, revisit Ultra Despair Girls for as well, so I figured I'd do this one first, revisit Ultra Despair Girls, make that video, and then the other video I had planned. So just want to explain that I'm not skipping it. Also for this one, I have some pretty exciting news. So a translator in the community, Kamun Kotino, has translated the art book for V3. So I'll be reading some of the official comments from the creators on these beta designs, as well as I go through them and give my opinion too. I won't be reading every single um, comment on every single design. So I'm going to be linking their translations in the description if you want to check them out. Mostly just going to be reading ones for the designs I find to be the most interesting and stuff like that. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. And if you do enjoy my content, please, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe. It really does help me out. The first character we have up is Saihara, and this is the first design that they have for him. The comment reads, the first male protagonist who would later become Saihara, its main difference from the final version is somewhat messy hair, resembling Nagito Kamida from Danganronpa 2. This design combining a knit-like vest, necktie, and wide brim hat is a rare combo that never made the final version of anything. <laughs> I guess that's true. Have not seen this design on anybody else before. It reminds me very much like an old school detective. And honestly, I think the character looks a lot more like Nagi than uh, Kamida. But I guess Kamida and Nagi look pretty similar as well. I do like how loopy his hoge is. <laughs> very nice. And I like the fact that he always was meant to have like these beautiful luscious eyelashes. I feel like that's such a staple for Sayara's character. But yeah, overall, I do think his character looks a little too much like Nagi for my taste. I do understand why they use like old characters as like a base design for these characters, since it's easy to kind of like use a base character and then just keep adding it and changing things until you get a character that's like really unique from previous ones. But I'm glad to see they didn't go with this one and that they changed it a decent bit to get our final version of Sayara, because I really like Sayara's design. I uh, feel like it's pretty different from the other protagonists. So I'm happy they went into that direction. I think overall, I'll probably put this one in C. I think C is okay for it. Next up, we have this design for Saihara, which he ends up having the same face as the first design, but they ended up changing his outfit to a Gakudan, which is the same outfit used in Saihara's final design. And for those of you guys who don't know, it is a style of male school uniform that's popular in Japan, mostly in junior high. I definitely think the Gakudan fits Saihara's final design a lot better, since it kind of complements his darker features, since I feel like it's a very like dark kind of uniform. And you know, Saihara has the very dark hair, the very dark mascara, I mean, I mean eyelashes, very natural eyelashes that he has. Another noticeable difference for this one and the other one that is mentioned in the description is that they decided to change the cap to make it more clear that its purpose is to hide him from eye contact. Since we know that Sahara had a lot of trouble making eye contact with others because of that case he solved. So I do like that in this design that he decided to put some more thought into why he wears the hat other than just covering up his beautiful luscious ahoge. But otherwise, I think I feel about the same about this one as I do about the previous one since the faces are still the same for the most part. So I'm gonna put it in C as well. And next up, we have male protagonist version 2B and he still looks like Nagi, but now he's got a huge ahoge. And this one looks like he has like three ahoges almost. I guess they just like wanted to really emphasize the ahoges because the protagonist switch. They're like, how big can we make it? How funny can we make the scene where he finally takes off the hat? But in this design, it says the version two design, but with a different hairstyle, it sports a much more edgy hairdo and the traditional Danganronpa ahoge is extra thick. His front facing sprite really shows how imposing he looks. His characteristically long lower eyelashes are doing well. <laughs> like I said, I'm glad that they kept his eyelashes the same in all of these. I don't know if I have too much of a preference between the curly ahoge and the um, extra thick ahoge that they gave him here. I think I like this one about the same as the others because again, the face really isn't all that different. So I'm going to put it in C as well. And finally, we have this last design for Saihara where he looks pretty similar to his official design. I just want to include it because he looks so much more like villainous in this one, you know what I mean? But they kind of talk about it a bit in the description too. They say that with a small face change on version 4, I drew Saihara as a cool type character. The idea of adding a unique design to his eyes was a concept shared by all versions, but this design here irradiates so much smugness, I had to change it to show him better as he is. A guy who often talks about his lack of self-esteem in the early chapters. Like I said and they mentioned, yeah, he looks so much more like smug and like villainous here. This is kind of what I imagine like a mastermind Saihara uh, looking like as well. Which if you guys haven't looked into like those mastermind like AUs, they're super interesting. I've always really wanted to make a video talking about them. But yeah, that's kind of like mostly what it reminds me of. But I do really like the idea of him being like a rival character. Like if Kaido would have stayed the protagonist like the whole game. Oh, he would have been such a good rival. <sighs> 
That's kind of what I was thinking might have happened, like, at the beginning of the game when I first started playing, when I didn't trust him. Since it's not too different from his previous ones, I guess I'll put it in A. I do really like the idea of him being, like, a rival type of character. I think his design would have fit really well with that. And of course, I love Kaede, so I would have liked to have seen her live till the end. And it would have been nice to see Sahara live towards the end, too, even if he was a smug little turd, like how he kind of looks in this art. Next up, we're moving on to Rontaro. His first design is titled Playboy version 1A in Kamun Katino's translation. And in my anniversary art book, it just calls him Airhead, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. I kind of felt like the Airhead thing might have been referring to how he kept on losing his sisters like over and over again in the free time events. His description reads, the first design of the ladies man student who would later become the prototype for a mommy. While he looks well personable and nice, there's something off putting about the smile on his face. I wrote in my notes that his Gakuren would have two colors, but what colors was I planning to use? Yeah, I don't know that I'm super crazy about this one. He kind of looks like a Ken doll, but like too generic, I think. I feel like Rontara's official design had this like very creepy and like mysterious aura around him, even though he was a very handsome and like stylish looking guy. This guy, he just looks very like kind of plain and generic. And I guess he could be suspicious because he's so like plain looking, but I just don't feel like it's as interesting of a design like at all. So it might be kind of harsh, but I'm gonna put this one in D rank. And next up we have this design, which I like to think of as male Ibuki. The comment reads, version two takes a complete 180 from the one above. Unlike the final Amami with his slightly drooping eyes, this one slit gave an amazingly strong impression. His asymmetrical hairstyle with highlights, his layered clothes, everything about him feels very hard rock. I like this design way better than the other one. It's kind of crazy how they went from that other design to this one since the other guy was very kind of like preppy, you know, clothing. Whereas this guy is very like edgy, kind of like emo punk rock. But yeah, I feel like his design is really intricate. It's very detailed. He definitely gives off that like mysterious kind of creepy aura like he knows more than what he's letting on. So I think this would have been a really good design for a mommy. I feel like something I really like about Rontaro's official design is that it balances perfectly like his mysterious side as well as like his innocent kind of like cute side. His features are pretty like soft for the most part, but there's definitely like an aura around him of like mystery. And of course he has a lot of creepy sprites that you first see in the first chapter too. And it definitely makes you think that he knows a lot more than he's letting on. I think I do overall prefer his official design because it complements both sides of his character. The mysterious part really complementing how he's the ultimate survivor and his softer features really going well with his backstory with his sisters and how he was kind of an airhead and that whole situation. Although I do like that design better for Rontaro, I think a decent bit. I do really like this design too. I think it would be a really cool design to introduce into maybe later games. So um, regardless, I'm gonna put an S. Next up, we have this design for Rontaro and we're kind of coming back to the Nagi with the really pretty eyelashes design. They really seem to like this one a lot. It states his fashion style the same from version two, but his face and stuff were copied straight from the first Saihara to look more mild. The word playboy would make you think of a ladies man, but here he feels like a friendly younger boy. Yeah, so as you can see, like they said, they basically copied and pasted the Nagi face from the uh, Saihara design. It is interesting to see them trying to kind of like adjust what I was saying before, how I think the other character looked a little too serious for Rontaro since he does kind of have that like sweet, funny side to him. So it seemed like they were trying to go in the approach of making him less intimidating, but it seems like they might have gone too far with making him look too innocent here. I'm going to put the Nagi face with all of the other Nagi faces in C rank. And next, the Nagi face is back, <laughs> except this time he doesn't have beautiful eyelashes anymore. So I guess at least it's a little bit different now. Oh my God, I can't, I can't escape him. This face has been in like almost all the designs so far. The description reads, I simplified the design a lot for version five and made up for it by adding the Sarowell pants. His hair has that soft frizz like Shihiro Fujisaki from Danganronpa 1. And that design is so brimming in innocence and unreliability that I can only look at it and think this is a boy who hasn't fully grown yet. So again, they're trying to add that like innocence, I guess, to Rontaro that we do kind of see in his final design. But I definitely think they're relying too much on the softer features with channeling characters like Fujisaki and Naigi. Since I feel like with this design, as well as the other one, I feel like he has too many soft features to really have that presence of being like intimidating or scary. I think the droopy eyes that they give Rontaro on the official design, I feel like it does kind of make him look a little bit more smug than he does in these designs where he looks super duper innocent. So Nagi face, you are going back into C with all the other Nagi faces. Oh my God, literally a majority of the designs in this video so far have had the Nagi face. They they really, really love the Nagi face. I guess it makes sense. He's like the first protagonist, you know? So they would want to use him as a basis, but I'm so glad that the cast was not full of just like Nagi and Kamida like lookalikes. That would be terrifying. And kind of like that one Danganronpa mod. 
You know the one I'm talking about. Speaking of characters like Kamida, next we have Kokichi. The description for his first design reads, a younger looking boy type shot a design used for Oma. I don't remember if his status as a trickster was decided early on, but I decided to give him a poncho to emphasize his childishness. I added a school pattern to it and I emphasized on imbalance as his main point of charm. His face looks straight up like a handsome adult with that fearless smile. Before I played V3 and all I really knew about it was like the character designs, I really wanted Rontaro to be the right over Oma. Just because of Oma's like very childlike appearance, I didn't think that he would be very intimidating. But obviously after I played the game, I really came to love his character and like his childlike personality really added like an extra layer of like humor and it definitely kind of like differentiated his personality more from Kamida for me. I do like this design a good bit. It doesn't really fit his talent as the ultimate supreme leader, which I'm not really sure that they actually had come up with this talent at this point in the design. But then again, his official design doesn't really look like an ultimate supreme leader either. I remember thinking he was like a racer when I first saw his design before their talents were revealed. So overall, I think this is a good design. I'll put this one in A rank. Next up, we have this Kokichi design. It reads, a design with a main idea very different from its A counterpart. It's very close to the final Oma. The jacket, skinny pants, scarf silhouette, and the fairly long strand of hair crossing the face line are all things that have all been seen before. Its main unique point is the heterochromia. So like I said, this is definitely very close to his official design. We get to see the iconic checkered scarf that he's wearing. But also you can kind of see he has this big jacket on over his outfit and the um, outfit underneath looks pretty similar to the one that he wears in the official design. Just kind of like a darker version of it. I actually kind of think I like his clothes a bit better in this one. I feel like they look more like an ultimate supreme leader. Whereas in his official design, it looks more like he's wearing a straight jacket, honestly. So I feel like I actually prefer the addition to the jacket to his character. And of course he has heterochromia, which is basically like when each eye is a different color. I think that maybe if they did end up going with this, maybe the colors could symbolize the two sides of truth and lies that were shown at the end of the game. Since Oma's character is all about lies and he kind of like symbolizes that aspect of the main theme, but that's just kind of my, you know, interpretation of it. I definitely think it's a really cool idea to incorporate. So overall, I actually really like this design. I think I'm gonna put this in S. I think it's pretty cool. I think it would have been a really good design choice for Oma. And although I do like his official design, I think this might actually be like a little bit of an improvement on that design, in my humble opinion. <laughs> Next up, we have have Kibo and he has some very, very interesting designs as you will see. <laughs> they definitely were toying with the idea of giving him kind of like the goofy design that doesn't match the other characters like art style. And you can definitely see that with this first design. He looks very kind of like retro and he almost seems to have like Ryoma's face as well. The description reads, Kibo's first design from when Robot was still the only idea for his character. The model for the body was a naked figure with black briefs based on Tetsuwan Adam slash Astro Boy, making him feel like an old school retro robot. This is a very interesting piece that shows both how hard I tried to make him different from the Mecha Nidai and how I emphasized on friendliness and easiness to approach. <laughs> I hate this one. <laughs> I'm so glad they didn't go with this. He already got bullied so much with his official design. Can you imagine how much Kokichi would torture him more if he saw him looking like this? Like it would just be brutal. <laughs> like it would be so bad. So I'm very glad they ended up going with the other design. This one honestly makes it seem more like he's the very first robot ever invented. Like he looks like a nutcracker. Like his mouth is like kind of that nutcracker outline to it. Like his head has to almost like come undone in order for him to talk. Oh my God, he would look so goofy. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I'm very happy they didn't go with this design. This is definitely going in the cursed category which I just made for it. Okay, the next one for Kibo is this more kind of like humanoid robot. And his description reads, Kibo wearing a powered suit based on Uchu Keiji Gavin, the complete opposite of its A counterpart. The main unique factor on it is how his inorganic eyebrowless model shows his eyes are smaller than the eye sockets, making them look detachable. Oh, I can kind of see that now looking at it. I wonder if his eyes being detachable was an idea that they were thinking of incorporating to like any of the cases, like maybe he lost an eyeball and it saw something like the shadow of the killer setting up a murder scene or something like that. I can definitely see that being kind of the case. It would be creepy to see him take out his eye, especially in this form, because he looks like more human-like, I believe, in this form. I think it's mostly because his like top design is based off of like a human chest rather than like a Gakudan, like his um, official design. So I think that's kind of what makes him look more like a humanoid android instead of like just a robot. And I'm not gonna lie, it creeps me out a bit. And also his design, like they mentioned, is based off of an 80s space cop. So I wonder if his uh, talent was ever meant to be anything more than just like the ultimate robot. It's so, like, for example, maybe he was meant to be like the ultimate cop. And I kind of wonder if he would still be picked on like 
the characters would still be like, of course you're the ultimate cop, you're programmed to be the best cop in the world kind of thing. That was just kind of an idea I had for it. Overall, this design kind of creeps me out, but I still like it. I'm gonna put it in B. Next up, we have this Kubo design, which looks really similar to his official design. The only difference really is that he does not have an hoge, which makes it pretty cursed in my opinion. He looks so like bare without it, you know what I mean? So of course, gotta put it in the curse section. Our boy, our boy needs an antenna. Next up, we have Ganta Gokuhara and his base design was called Feral Child. And the first one reads, the Feral Child character that became the base for Ganta. The wild hairdo made it to the final version, but his body used to be a lot thinner and his chilled yet powerful eyes looked undeniably beautiful. It makes his status as a character born in a wealthy family feel very convincing. I do like this design. I think it does remind me a good bit of his official design, even though there's like slight changes to it. Like, of course he still has the wild hair which symbolizes his more kind of like wild side and for how a decent portion of his life he was raised in the forest and then of course we see like the very refined kind of suit outfit that symbolizes his wealthy human family that he also has and his dream of becoming like a very proper gentleman so overall i like it i do think i just kind of prefer his official design a bit more i don't really have like a good reason for it i just think the long hair looks nicer honestly so i'm gonna put this one in b next up we have this design which makes him look a lot more Tarzan-like. It's described as with a design that emphasizes more strongly his wildness, showing off his thick neck and great physique. You can see his brawny face and well-toned muscles through his ripped GI. This forms a good match with the characteristic barefootedness, and that was the point in development where the final version's deeply chiseled eyes came from. Like I said with the last one, I do like that Gonta's official design has like the aspects of like his wildness, as well as including like the suit that kind of symbolizes more like his wealthy family and his dream of becoming a refined gentleman. So this one I feel like kind of focuses just too much on the wild side and I like that balance that the official design and the other one have. So overall, I think I'm gonna put this one in C. Next up, we have Karekio's beta design. And this one reads, Shinguji's base design already had the Gakuren uniform, school hat, and most of the body hidden in clothing details since version one. The bandages on his arms were based on the fact that his body is covered in scars and those bandages only cover a fraction of his injuries. The shorter hair goes surprisingly well on it and looks very charming. I I love this design. I think it looks so good. One thing I thought that was really interesting about um, a difference between this design and his official one is that in this description, they mentioned that the bandages are meant to cover his scars, but in a comment relating to his official design, they mentioned that both of his arms are always wrapped in bandages and that it's really unlikely that he's actually injured. And since he's a cultural anthropologist, the implication is that it's related to sorcery. So I'm guessing this was probably made before his talent was decided. And that was why they kind of had the scar idea originally. Yeah, everything about this design just looks so elegant and so nice. I honestly think I might like it a bit better than his official design. I've been trying to think of why he has an eye patch, and originally I was thinking maybe it was to cover up like the sister side of his personality. Since in the final design, he takes off that mask and shows like the lipstick, and that's when he begins to imitate sister. So I was thinking his other eye maybe had like eye makeup on, and that was when he would, you know, start imitating sister basically. But it actually does show his other eye underneath the mask, and it doesn't look like he has any makeup on it, so I'm not totally sure why he would need to cover it. I guess it could just be a fashion statement since his character is just the aesthetics character. But the lack of mask in this one does imply that there's no sister plot line, so 10 out of 10. <laughs> Love this one. Going in the no more sister rank, God bless. No, I'm just kidding, I'll put an A rank. I really do like this one a lot. I think it honestly is like one of the best designs so far. Next up, we have Ryoma Hoshi's beta designs. And just a warning, there is a lot of them and a lot of them are very cursed. As you will see with this very first one, they did him so dirty. He looks like a human thumb with like a shoujo male lead's face. Like it just, <laughs> It looks all kinds of wrong. Like, I don't know what they were thinking with this design. I like these notes too. No chin, low shoulders, but still amazing. <laughs> but God, he's still so handsome. <laughs> Aren't you uh, fanning yourself, fangirls? Don't you love him? Oh my god. His description reads, the design for the prisoner character, later Hoshi. You can see here I tried to explore his unique body type and his hard-boiledness in a completely different direction. He's full of signs to his status as a prisoner, as the anti-escape anklets and the striped shirts everyone considers prison clothes. Yeah, this one's cursed. I can't. I can't even look at it for too long. I just love the notes too. It's like, but still amazing. Like, they're so proud of this one. This has got to be like one of the weirdest beta designs out of like any of the characters in all the games. Like, 
handsome thumb. Like what, what possessed them to come up with this idea? Next up, we have little naughty boy elf, a base for a young boy, very different from its A counterpart. This cute design has a face with a plumpy outline combined with a beanie, and it was regarded as too cute and boyish by the higher ups, but you can still see many signs of the final Hoshi in it. The intent in this pick was to go for a huge contrast between his prisoner characterization and how he's drawn in the Doraemon slash Kiraetsu manga art style. I mean, I think it's better than the last one, but that's not, that's not saying much since the bar is just so, so low. But yeah, he looks like a little elf boy. I like that it says like a naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> in the notes. It sounds so weird. I don't know. This one's super weird. I can understand why the higher ups didn't like it. It also kind of looks like he's wearing like, I don't know, like a child swimsuit or even maybe like a diaper. Like it's a very weird choice for a prison uniform. I'd love to see some burly guys in like this weird little outfit with like the diaper little short shorts. What is this prison? I'm gonna say slightly better, but still cursed. Next up, we have another little elf boy design for Ryoma. This one's got a knife. So obviously it's a little bit better than the previous one. It reads, a design with a funny red face with red cheeks and round eyes. In the notes saying, quick to stab is very Danganronpa. He's overall very cute with the bobble on top of the beanie and stripe design covering it as well. Something that's a bit funny about this design versus the last one, even though they're both like little cute elf boy designs, they do look super duper different. Like the body proportion, the um, design of their face and stuff. I do like this one a little bit more just because of the memeiness of him like carrying around a knife while looking like this. He looks like a little kitty cat in the face. Like he's so, he's so freaking adorable. But then he's just running around with a knife ready to stab anybody who gets in his way. <laughs> oh god, that's hilarious. If they ended up using this design too, I would hope that he would like actually stab somebody without it being a case. Like you just piss him off and he's just like, eh, eh. <laughs> Oh, he's so adorable though. I couldn't be mad at him. I would just be like, oh, that's just little Ryoma. <laughs> he's just so cute. He just likes to stab people. It's no big deal. God, Kokichi, get over it. He stabbed you one time. You didn't die, okay? Honestly, it's so adorable. I just, I can't hate it. I'm gonna put you in cursed plus where you're cursed but I still really like the design. Next up we have this Ryoma which looks a lot more like his official design. It reads a very fashionable version 3 with a slim body type and a long parka. He inherited the moon face and button shaped nose from 1B and distinct spiral marks on his cheeks. The way he glares from behind the hat shows glimpses of Hoshi's nihilism. Now this one definitely looks a lot more like his official character and I like it a lot honestly. I like the dark colors. I like how his beanie kind of covers up his eyes. It kind of implies the same thing as Saihara's design that he doesn't want to make eye contact with anybody and I think that fits his character pretty well. I feel like he would want to avoid eye contact for a different reason since he's very antisocial and doesn't want to get close to anybody. I feel like this might have been before they decided to make him a tennis pro though since I don't see any tennis related designs unlike in his official one where he has those tennis rackets on his beanie but overall I do like it a good bit. I'm gonna put this one in A. Good design Hoshi. Next up we have this one for Hoshi where they added the um, horned beanie hat. You definitely see they're going more into like the direction of the official design. It reads, the biggest highlight here is the origin of the horned beanie hat. His body type is the youngest looking of all his beta designs. Too young to be a high schooler, I would say. I think people would look forward to see a prisoner character that looks like this. I guess the teeth showing from the mouth proves his status as naughty boy. And yet in the comments here, they have naughty boy and then just nice. Like, <laughs> I love these comments by Komatsuzaki. Like, half of them are just so like big, just like nice, but still amazing. I always wondered what these comments said and it's fun to see them trans and see that they're just like so silly, you know what I mean? It seems like maybe now they've kind of decided on his talent since these kind of look like the tennis rackets that we see on his official beanie. And I definitely do like the horn beanie better than the previous one since it does add a bit more like uniqueness to his character and it kind of shows that more like devilish side that he has. I can definitely tell they really wanted to have like a cute yet scary character and I appreciate their dedication to like creating this and how many different like art styles they tried. I definitely prefer Ryoma's like official design and this one as well as like the last one and trying to create that perfect balance since you know he looks like a character I can take seriously while also being adorable you know I still want to pinch his little cheeks he's still very cute. This one I'll put an A I like it a decent bit. Next up is this one where it seems like they go back to the little elf design I don't know why. <laughs> like I said before it seems Seems like they definitely want to reach like this compromise of like cute yet scary and I guess they were just trying out a bunch of different things but it's just funny to see how close they got to like the official Hoshi design but then they went back to this little elf guy like right afterwards. This one reads a thinned down version of 2C tried to go for something more bizarre by giving him shoulders and stiff and slackless facial expressions and it showed. Many versions did the western cartoon styled younger boy body type with no neck but the C versions especially are meant to look like babies. Yeah it looks like a more 
angry version of the knife one, but he doesn't have the knife anymore. That makes him so lame. I liked you better when you had a knife and you were more bloodthirsty. I'm just gonna put in the curse category since I don't like it as much as uh, my little knife elf guy. The next one that they have is basically just his official design. I think it's funny that they kind of flip-flop so much between these, getting like really close to his design and going back to the elf boy, then basically having his official design. I don't actually have this one included since it's so close to his official design. I just think it's funny that it's like in the middle of all these other things that they're trying. Next up, we have this one, which is basically the baby little elf face, but on the official outfit, like I mentioned before. I just think it's so funny that they go from like literally the official design, but they were like, nah, let's try. Let's try little baby face again. Why don't they give him a knife again? I like the knife. I thought the knife was funny. I think this one's gonna go in D instead of the curse section, just because it's like they use this face so much that like I'm starting to get like desensitized to it. It's not even curse anymore to me. I just don't really like it that much. And then our final design for Hoshi is this one where he has like his little Mickey Mouse ears on. I. <laughs> Again, I don't really know what they were thinking with some of these. I like to personally imagine that the reason that he's in prison is that he shanked somebody at Disneyland and then he just left the Mickey Mouse ears on because he liked it so much. I just love the idea of him keeping the Mickey Mouse hat on. He's like, no, the Mickey Mouse ears stay. The description reads, where I experiment with younger body lines, I gave round ears to the beanie, basing the design on a roly-poly I had in childhood. Come on, man, it looks like Mickey. Don't even try. <laughs> Trying to avoid the lawsuit from the Mickey Mouse ears. He turned out to be a prisoner, all about cutesy, with the sharply cut bangs and all. Like I said, I'm kind of desensitized to this face being cursed, but I gotta say the Disney ears make it more cursed to me. Next up, we have Kaido, and he's called the group leader in Kamun Kotino's translation, which I thought was kind of an interesting way to describe him. In this group leader character design, aka the base for Momota, I gave him a strong and reliable face, giving the impression of him as a leading force deserving of being the protagonist. You still can't see Momota's unique hairstyle. Instead, this more realistic hairdo emphasizes more on his handsomeness. I really like this design a lot. I think it'd be perfect for Kaido if he wasn't, you know, like uh, the ultimate astronaut, because the only thing that really is missing from this, in my opinion, is kind of like the space stuff that he wears. He still has like a very kind, but yet like reliable face to him that I think is seen in the official design as well. And overall, yeah, I just like it a lot. I'm gonna put it in S rank. Next up, we have this one, which makes Kaido look a lot more intimidating, in my opinion. He has a note here that says hot-blooded manga art style, which I definitely agree with. The hot blood pumps spurning to the max in this B version. Drawing in Kazuhiko Shinomoto's art style really leaves a visible luminary of the stars spirit. Unlike his A counterpart with his biker jacket, this one wears a standard uniform, but I'm guessing this one gave a heavier character impact when looking at the big picture of their images. I decided to look up the mangaka that he mentioned, Kazuhiko Shimamoto, and they were the creator of Hono no Tenkose. And if you look at the protagonist for that series, you can definitely see a lot of resemblance between them and uh, Kaido's design here. He looks very much like a very classic shonen protagonist. I do like this one, but I feel like it's a little too retro for my taste overall. So I think I'm gonna put it in B rank. Next up, we have this design for Kaido, where his hair looks pretty similar to the last one, but his design looks more traditional. Description reads, hardcore scruffy fashion combining a lengthened gakuren worn with no shirt under it. Basa hair and geta. You can feel the idea of him wearing kabuki prints still exists in his future uniform's inner space print. He would be defined by his wild facial expressions like Kazuichi Soda in Danganronpa 2. I can definitely see the Kazuichi inspiration with this design. I think it's mostly his eyes and like his smile is really like sharp and wide like Kazuichi. The reason I was thinking that he has more of a traditional design in this one is because of the geta shoes that he's wearing and the kabuki print that he has on his outfit. It makes me wonder if one of the ideas that they had for his talent was maybe something having to do with like history or something like that. But that's just kind of my general thoughts on it at the moment. Other than that, I don't have too much of an opinion on it. I definitely think I prefer his facial expressions in the last ones where he looks more kind of like kind and reliable. This one, he definitely has a lot more of like a very edgy and like emotive look to him. And I just think that the other design fits the more kind of like group leader, reliable character that he ends up being. So I think overall, I'm gonna put this in C. Next up, we have this one, which looks a lot more similar to his official design. It reads, this design contrasts with its A counterpart by having the kabuki pattern over white cloth instead of black. This one takes a different interpretation to the keyword hot-blooded, making him much more Momoda-ish, especially with the introduction of his rocket propulsion shaped hair. I never really noticed how his hair was themed after like a rocket propulsion. I see it now though, after looking at it. That's pretty cool, especially how it connects with like his ultimate talent. Obviously, like I said, he looks a lot more like the official design and I do like the official design a lot for Kaido. I do definitely prefer his outfit in the official version with like the space print and stuff like that.
like that. Even if it was space print instead of like a kabuki print and it went with this talon more, I still wouldn't like it as much just because I feel like it's too much to have that full design on like the entire outfit, you know what I mean? It's too kind of like flashy and overbearing in my opinion. I think it looks a lot better to have like a big design like that kind of complement in the background. Like how he has the cape with a space print that complements the purple suit he wears. So since I don't really like the outfit for this one, I think I'm gonna put it in C. Next up we have evil looking Kaido. Version three replaces the kabuki motif with a space motif. Here we have a jacket covered with planets and a t-shirt under it. As you can tell from the close up to his face, the hair was realigned and he is drawn like a more traditional handsome character. He looks so intimidating in this one. He doesn't have that kind of like kind, <laughs> reliable face that you see in his official design and in the other ones. So overall, I don't think I'm super crazy about this one unless they ended up making him a rival character. It kind of reminds me of my old theories that I had about him since I originally thought that Kaido was going to be like the Kamida type of character in V3. But after playing the game, I just don't see him being that type of character at all. It's like hard for me to even imagine it. You know what I mean? I do kind of wonder if that was like an idea at one point because they do mention making him like more approachable in one of his more finalized designs. Because yeah, in this one, he looks very um, mean and intimidating in my personal opinion. But yeah, overall, I think I'm gonna put this one in C. But now moving on, we're going to take a look at the girls beta designs. And we're gonna start off with Kaide. And the description reads, the base for Akamatsu, one of the two protagonists. From its first version, you can tell it already contains most of the elements of the final version. The main difference is the final Akamatsu's blonde hair and cheerful expression against this one's darker hair and more serious, dignified expression, resulting in a design that appears to be more stable and reliable. So one interesting thing about Kaide's design is that even in the final version, she has the same outfit on, which is probably taken from the gas mask girl in Danganronpa 2, which I talked about a bit in that video. So I thought it was kind of interesting that they decided to reuse that uh, outfit design. But yeah, otherwise there's not too much to say. Again, it doesn't really seem like they knew her talent since the music note hairpins aren't here. Something that I kind of wonder from reading this is that since they both describe Saihara and Kaide as, you know, the protagonist from the very beginning, even their beta designs, it seems like they always planned on doing the protagonist switch. But I kind of wondered if maybe at one point they didn't know which character was going to get killed off in the first chapter. And maybe that's why they gave Kaide like a more serious design. Like maybe at one point it was supposed to be Saihara that died first. And then um, Kaide became the main protagonist of the game. I could see that potentially being the case if they ended up using one of those like really innocent like Nike um, designs for him. This idea kind of goes along with the next design too, where she wears this hat. Granted, you can't see the Ahoge behind the hat, unlike Saihara where he like hides his. But the fact they even gave her a hat made me kind of wonder if they did at one point think that maybe she would be the protagonist for the whole game. Maybe I'm just being hopeful, but <laughs> it's just kind of an idea I had. Overall, I like this design, but I do prefer her real design a decent bit, kind of with her more like cheery personality. So I'll probably put this one in B. Next, we have this one, which I kind of mentioned a little bit before, where she has the hat. And this one reads, a much more elaborate hairstyle with her long hair going down and her braided bangs, giving a much more rich girl image than it's a counterpart. I think I do prefer this one a decent bit more to the last one. I love the braids. I think it's so pretty. And she does kind of look like a detective to me, I guess just with the hat. So I think that was another reason why I was like somewhat um, theorizing that maybe at some point they considered swapping like Saihara and Kaide's roles and having him die in the first chapter and her taking over. I kind of wonder if people would have gotten quite as mad if it would have been reversed too. Cause everybody was like really hyped up for a female protagonist, like when V3 was announced, even before the protagonist was announced, people thought that Maki on the cover was, was potentially gonna be the protagonist and people were like really excited about it. So some of me thinks that they chose Kaide as like the fake protagonist because so many people were hyped for a female protagonist. And I think that they thought that we wouldn't expect them to kill her off just because we were all so hyped for it. But of course, Kadaka is like the world's biggest troll. So he did it. But anyways, I really like like this one. I think I'm going to put it in S. Next up is Kaide's last design and it looks basically like the official design. The only reason I included it in this tier list was just because she doesn't have the music note pins anymore. So I'm going to put this one in A just because it's basically the finished product but she just doesn't have those like final touches added that I think make it more of an S rank. Next up we have Miyu Iruma described as the science girl in this translation. Hers reads, the science girl design linked to who would later become Miyu Iruma. Her final version's main visual traits are all here as listed in my notes here, the pinkest seifuku, blonde, and garter bands. Adding her curled up blonde hair, you can feel much more intensity. For those of you guys who don't know, the seifuku, which was mentioned in the description, is basically just referring to like the Japanese like sailor uniform, basically, that you see in a lot of different anime. I guess they wanted to make it pink to show that she was kind of girly. She looks very mischievous and um, perverted here, very much like her official version. And you can see a little smug look she's got on her face. It's interesting that they originally used like the Celestia curls though for her. I think it looks good, but I think it looks a bit too formal 
normal for me. And I feel like that hairstyle really fits a character like Celeste who puts so much thought into like all the things she says and all of her plans. Whereas Miu, on the other hand, just kind of wings things more. Whenever she's right in a trial, it's kind of just because she's guessing. She's a bit more erratic and um, kind of a loose cannon, you know? So I think um, her wilder hair definitely fits her better in her official design but I do like this one. I'll put it in B as well. Next up, we have Science Girl version 1B, a casual design going in a different direction from its A counterpart, taking many elements from the mechanic beta designs used for Kazuichi Soda in Danganronpa 2. She sports a fashion style that values functionality with the ripped backwards cap, the overall shorts, etc. The only thing I think of whenever I look at this design is just like, this is Kazuichi's dream woman. Like, <laughs> she's blonde, she's pretty, she's an inventor, so it's kind of close to being a mechanic. I honestly think they would be a lot better of a pair than him and Sonya. But I honestly like really love this design. I think it goes better with her talent, honestly, being an inventor. Kind of you would imagine her wearing something a bit more like casual and easy to work in. Her miscut bangs kind of show like how she's a bit of a rebel too and like a bit erratic. I think I actually might like it a little bit better than her actual official design. I think my only slight complaint with this design is I think her face looks a little too much like Kazuichi in um, this picture, but I feel like here it looks a bit softer. So I think as long as they softened her features a bit more to make sure she doesn't look too much like Kazuichi. It's like a perfect design. So I'm still going to put an S personally. I love this design. I think it's so, so cool. And I think it makes more sense for her talent. I think with the official design, they probably decided to use like the mixture of the garter bands as well as like the Seifuku to maybe like symbolize the two sides of her personality. It's like the garter bands symbolize her vulgar and outspoken side while like the baby pink Seifuku symbolizes the more like timid side of her personality when she gets called out or like insulted. So I think at the end of the day, they probably just decided that they would rather her design kind of match her personality more rather than her talent, which I definitely think is um, a very viable option. Now that I'm talking about this, I think I like them both for different reasons. <laughs> I didn't really think about why they chose her design until just now. I'm still going to put this one in S rank since I like both. And the last one we have for Mew is Science Girl version 2A. Added an overall queenly fashion tone to version 2 with her main bondage Seifuku element and a punk spice with the fingerless gloves and the pinwheel boots. Her eyes with open pupils go hand in hand with her uncon conventional attitude. So this one's kind of like a more unhinged version basically of the official design. I guess maybe they thought the hair was too distracting and that was why they didn't go with it. I like this one a lot. I mean, like I said before, I think like the baby pink like Seifuku and the garter bands were likely meant to symbolize like the two sides of her personality. So overall, I actually do like this design, even though I do like the other one a lot too. I think they're both good in their own ways and they both seem to have like a decent amount of thought put into it, you know? I do like how like crazy her hair is too. I think it does like fit her personality pretty well. It's kind of hard for me to decide if I prefer this one or the other one. So I'm gonna put this one in S2. I'm very easy to please in this uh, ranking video so far. And next we're moving on to Samugi. Her description reads, the cosplayer character turned the base for Shirogane. The number one priority was to make her as plain as possible, to make her impactfully very different from when she is in cosplay. So I drew her with long black hair, glasses, and with the most ordinary and unobstructive uniform possible. I really like the concept of Samugi's character, but I don't think they did a very good job like showcasing it. I I feel like I don't know. It's like, I see what they were trying to go for, making her like super plain. So that way when she's in cosplay, it'll like really contrast her plain personality. And it would make sense like why she likes cosplay so much. She doesn't want to be her plain old boring self. She wants to be Junko or, you know, whoever she's cosplaying as. Yeah, I just wish they would have showed her like cosplaying like characters before the final reveal so that we kind of see her personality better, you know? She could have like this kind of miniature arc of her like overcoming her insecurities for being so plain and maybe like helping out in the trials. That way, when you see that she is the mastermind and like, oh, she was faking it, it's like more emotional and it kind of has like an impact on you. Cause, cause yeah, I feel like the reveal of her character didn't really have much of an impact on me. Not like it would have if it was a character that I was like actually close with the whole game, you know? But yeah, I mean, this design looks fine. She looks, you know, plain like her official design does, just like slight differences in like the hair and the clothing. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. I'll put it in C. And the next design for her, same outfit, but slightly different bangs. And this one reads the same general direction as her A counterpart, but with bangs down. All three versions of the first lineup have the same suits type uniform. They give off the same impression that they were supposed to, and the short skirt combined with stockings achieves the perfect balance between pure and sexy. Showing her thigh lines is important. I guess like the sexy aspect was to make it like relate to Junko more, but I never got that from her character like at all <laughs> in her official design or her other designs. I remember like Kaide made a comment about her thinking that Shirogane was like really pretty, but 
but other than that, I don't really remember ever thinking that she was like, I don't know, like Junko, you know what I mean? I feel like if they have to have a character like comment on that, it probably means it wasn't done super well. <laughs> I'm like ripping on her. I'm sorry. I just feel like I love like female villains so much and I feel like there's so much more that they could have done with her. So I'm a little salty about it and I apologize. I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna start moving these lower. I'm gonna put this one in C as well. Next we have this design, which is getting a little bit closer to her official design, at least clothing wise. Okay, this one reads, we got her a high-waisted corset skirt to emphasize her chest and improve the whole direction of the outfit to get more of a cosplayer vibe. Since her eyes are slightly more mild mannered compared to the final designs, her entire face looks more calm. So I assume it would make her never stand even when she's always there. Yeah, I feel like in her official design, her eyes look a lot more innocent compared to this one. They described it as calm, but to me, it looks a bit more like calculating. She definitely has like an evil aura <laughs> around her in this design. I think it's just the way she's posing. <laughs> kind of like that like upper look. Mm. <laughs> I would start being suspicious <laughs> of her like immediately with this design, and especially with the next one. I'll show you guys the next one. It's basically the same design, but she has like these bangs that cover up her eyes and she's still doing that same pose like the I'm not evil I promise pose. <laughs> I feel like I would have definitely suspected her a lot more <laughs> with these designs instead of like uh how my playthrough went where I just kind of forgot she was there most of the time. I'll go ahead and read her second description since they're both pretty similar. Adding a jacket to her A counterpart, the outfit gets really close to the final Shirogane. Her bangs are cut diagonally and by hiding one eye it implies her character has a dark side to her. She's sporting short boots unlike the first version or the final design. Yeah these <laughs> I don't know, they're a little funky. <laughs> she just looks so evil. <laughs> like, she just looks like she's the mastermind. I think it was just a character like Celestia, who's a bit like calculating and like vindictive. It would be fine. But a design for a mastermind, it's just a little too memey to me. Like, it just, it's a little too obvious. It's like, oh, no way. It's the creepy emo girl with her eye covered that stares at us like this. <laughs> like, no way it was her. That's so shocking. Okay, I think I'll put these in D. Maybe I'm being too harsh on Shiragane, but. I'm not crazy about him. And overall, I just think he could have been a better character, Shiragane. I'm sorry. Next up, we have Tenko, who I love so much. I love Tenko. I don't know if that's like a hot take or not anymore, but I will always love Tenko. She has such a soft, sweet side. And her free time events are so, so adorable. I urge you guys to play them. If you don't like her, it really makes her very lovable, in my opinion. But then again, I loved her during the main game too. Mostly during chapter three was when I really warmed up to her. But anyways, her description for this first one reads the Aikido girl design that later became the base for Chabashira. Comparing her to the final Chabashira, her face is drawn more dignified, emphasizing more on her Pretty Girl 5. The main uniform aspects, double-breasted, dual-layered skirt, made it to the final release. I feel like this one's actually pretty close to like her final design. Just like a few different aspects are changed. Like she doesn't have her little kitty, kitty ears bow in the background, which I feel like is a huge staple of her design. She also doesn't have like the midriff showing. I think she looks good, but I definitely do prefer her final design a bit more. I feel like she looks more sporty in the official design, which fits her personality better, while here she looks more like a schoolgirl. I also feel like a lot of the details they added made her a lot more like unique looking. So this one, I'll probably put in B since I think it's a good base. Next up, we have Akane with kitty ears. <laughs> this was the second one that they uh, chose. It reads, Chabashira wearing a gi she never had the chance to wear in the game. The short hair and fierce eyes reminds me strongly of Akane Awari from Danganronpa 2. Maybe to make it more cute, I added a big ribbon to her hair in a way to make it look like cat ears. This is where the giant ribbon in the final version came from. Oh, okay, so it is a ribbon in the back of her head. I feel like with the final design, you can tell a lot more that it's like just a ribbon, you know? This one, it just looks like cat ears to me. I'm glad they didn't reuse Akane's design though. I think it would be too weird. Unless they're trying to like psych you out or do some kind of like parallel between the characters, like what they meant to do with Nagito and um, Nagi. I think otherwise it's good not to make the characters look too similar. I love you Akane and I love kitty ears, but I think this is just kind of a weird choice. So I'm gonna put this one in D. Next up we have this design where they decided to fully commit to the cat ears and even gave her a little cat tooth <laughs> there. It reads, it is Design put together by combining 1A's general direction with a cat ear band on her head. She wears enamel shorts with heart print high socks. I tried many of the different approaches to be somehow cute like a closet otaku design point. Oh, she has like little hearts on her socks too. That's so cute. Overall, I mean, it looks pretty similar to her official design except for the cat ears and the thing. I'm glad they decided to go with a ribbon. It's a little less like on the nose, you know what I mean? I feel like it'd be too random for her to just kind of have like cat ears on. I guess if they made like a part of her personality 
personality being like a pretty big weeb, it would make sense. Overall, I feel like it's a pretty weird design choice, but I can't really bring myself to like dislike it, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna put this one in Cursed Plus as well. Next up, we have Kurumi's beta designs. The first one reads, the maid dress drawn in version one is highly styled after cosplay fashion. Just combine long hair, a corset mini skirt, and a blouse with a detailed lace, and you get top tier maid fashion. I do like this design a lot. I think this would definitely be like a good design and like outfit choice for like an alternative for Celestia or maybe an alternative for like a cosplay character since the um, maid outfit is definitely a lot more like cosplay inspired like they said in the description. Overall, even though I do like this design, I don't feel like it really complements Kurumi's motherly personality, her face or the um, outfit itself. So I'm glad they went in the direction that they did for her. I do think I'll put this one in A actually, even though I don't think it fits Kurumi all that well. I do think it's a really cool design that they could definitely like take aspects of and use for like future characters. Next up we have this one. It reads an arguably more subdued design compared to its A counterpart with the knee length skirt. However, what it loses in leg exposure, it gains in chest exposure highlighted by her corset. Also a lot of elements like the bolero sleeves going with the long gloves. This is the version with the most cyborgish silhouette. I think this design's definitely pretty for her. I feel like it does kind of encapsulate that more like motherly personality, but it also does kind of show like in her eyes that she's a very like serious person. Always thought the Kurumi's design was likely inspired by 2B since they look so similar. And the fact that they mentioned her kind of like looking like a cyborg or an android in this one makes me think that there was likely some inspiration from 2B, especially because if you look at her final design and compare it to 2B, they look so, so similar. I think I'm gonna put an S. Kurumi's designs are so pretty. Next up, we have this one. And my God, she looks so pretty in this design. Like, oh my God, this design is gorgeous. I'm just gonna go ahead and put an S. I don't even have to think about it. I kind of wish they went with this design. It looks so like detailed and like, ugh, it just looks so good. But anyways, the description for this one reads, continuing my journey to figure out how made fashion works. I took a leap in the Gothic Lolita direction. The extravagant frills and lace she's wearing makes you feel her madam-like image. Also the main charm of this one is how it emphasizes one of Toju's personality traits, her sharply clever expression. And then the comment here reads, I'm considering having overall neutral colors everywhere, but only the hair with a really flashy color. Oh, that's interesting. I feel like having like dark colors with the silver hair would look really good. I don't really know exactly how flashy he was thinking, like if it would be like pink or something, I think that would be too much. But like I said, I don't know, I just love this design. I think it's so pretty. I think this is a better like gothic Lolita design than what even Celeste had, you know? I don't really know if it's very made like, but I just think they should use it again for somebody else. It's so freaking pretty. <laughs> I feel like I'm always kind of hating on Kurumi because of the way she killed Hoshi, which in my opinion, she was way too like unnecessarily cruel with it. But if she had this design, I think I'd forgive her. <laughs> you do what you need to, queen. You you had a good reason for it. But yeah, I don't really have like too many things to say about it other than she looks really pretty. And I like it a lot. Please use this design in a future Danganronpa game if there is one. Next up we have Maki and she has a ton of designs. So the section's actually gonna be decently long. This is the first one, and it's obviously way different than uh, what she ended up looking like in the main game. It seems like some of her very first designs were likely inspired by Raruka Ando from the anime, who is not the um, most likable character in the franchise, I'll say that much, but her design is pretty. But her description reads, the first version of the child caregiver girl who became the base for Harukawa. Although the uniform under the cardigan is exactly the same as the final version, she gives a completely different impression due to the different face and hairstyle. Her face probably looks this lonesome because the key word was hates children. So you'll see the descriptions later, but for some of these early designs, it was before they decided to make her an assassin as well, which is why her features are so soft and she doesn't really have like an assassin vibe to her at all. I do think she looks cute though. And I like the idea of being a child caregiver who doesn't like children at all. I think that's a pretty funny um, concept. But yeah, it's interesting because her character would just be like totally different if this was the direction they ended up going in. Also her little hair piece here kind of looks like the ribbon that Tenko wears in the back of her head that makes the kitty ears. I wonder if they kind of took that design and then um, implemented it for Tenko later. I think I might put it in B. I do like it a decent bit, but I do feel like it's a little more plain compared to the next one that they had for the child caregiver, which I think I like a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and move on to this one. And this description reads, the highly fashionable B version, matching a beret-like knit hat with a poncho. Her hair is long and tied with a scrunchie. You could say the dynamic impact caused showing her legs. Here was an important planning step in order to achieve the final Harukawa. Her sociably looking smile is one aspect that goes in a directly opposite direction to its A counterpart. I think this one kind of shows a bit more personality than the last one, which makes her a bit more unique to me, which is why I think I like it better and why I'm going to put it in A rank. I feel like she looks very fashionable
comfortable and wealthy here. And her facial expression makes her look kind of snooty too, you know what I mean? So I feel like that could be like another interesting personality trait to add on. Top of her being a child caregiver who doesn't like children, I think it could make her personality a bit more entertaining, which is why I kind of lean more towards this one. Since more personality shines through and I can kind of imagine her role and like the comedic aspect she would add to the game. Next up, we start to see Maki with a more assassin-like design. And this one reads, in a bold move, I added a kimono and an upwards ponytail, making a version two that looks nothing like the final version, not what you would expect a child caregiver to look like. Her refined yet striking impression really shows that this version was made after Kadaka decided on the idea that she was secretly an assassin. I like the kimono a lot and her face of course looks very pretty, but I'm not, I'm not feeling the hair. It's giving me Mondo beta designs where like <laughs> she could use the hair as a weapon. Like that's why she's such a good assassin. She doesn't need a weapon. She's got her hair. She just headbutts you <laughs> and that's, and that's how she kills you. Yeah, I don't know. I do like everything except for the hair though. So I'm like trying to decide where I should put this one. I think it's just because like it looks goofy, but I feel like I'm also meant to take it seriously is why I'm not super crazy about it. I think I'll put it in C. Next up we have this one, a lot more subdued design. And it reads, a long sleeve polo shirt with a checkered skirt gives her a child caregiver like figure. Her ponytail is tied very high, signaling her as a traditional high school girl. Even in the black and white drawing, you can tell that her image color is red. Also, they mentioned a translation note here that the curled there in curled hair is pronounced as maki in Japanese. And the same thing goes for 3C. So I guess they decided to add the curled hair because it sounds similar to her name, which I think is a pretty cute idea. I definitely like these more subdued designs for her. You can definitely start to see like her final version coming through in this design. And I like this one a good bit. It definitely does seem, I guess, a bit more um, plain compared to the final version. She definitely has a lot more like trinkets, and like bows and stuff. But overall, I definitely think it's the right direction. And I really like her hair like that. To me, it kind of looks like the official design of Maki, but she's just wearing like a different outfit and a different hairstyle. So I think it looks pretty. I'll put her in A rank, I like it. Next, we have this one where it seems like she's wearing more of an outfit inspired by some of Shiragane's designs. This one reads, the C version made herself a celebrity uniform with a striped shirt, a neck and a corset skirt. Her bangs are thick and curled. So mid height is the ponytail height that goes best with it. The detailed and realistic design makes her look like the only child of a rich family. This one's super pretty. I don't know if it really fits Maki, but I do like it a lot. I feel like her outfit reminds me a lot of what they went with for Shiragane. And then her hair kind of reminds me of a mixture of Canon and um, Sonya. It kind of makes me wonder if this is when they decided to start looking more at the Ultra Despair Girls beta designs for inspiration for her. Since, um, as you guys may or may not know, one of Kamaru's designs looks almost exactly like Maki's official design. So maybe around the time that they were kind of playing with adding aspects of Canon's character from Ultra Despair Girls, decided to start looking at Kamaru's designs and incorporate more of her looks into Maki as well. But yeah, this one's also very pretty. I'm gonna put this one in A too. We have a couple more for Maki. A lot of them aren't too different from the ones we've already seen, so I'm gonna try to go through them fast. This one is for A. I used a polo shirt design as a base and added some details like the chest ribbon and remaking the checkered pattern to appear only in the folded part of the three quarter sleeves. From this 4A onwards, the checkered skirt appeared in all of her designs with the black stockings following suit in most of them. This one looks looks pretty similar to the other one we saw for Maki, but it seems like they added a lot more details that you see in the official design, like the bow and some of the trinkets that she wears too. So I think I'm gonna put this one in A and maybe I'll move the other one down to B since that one's kind of a more plain version of this one. And then finally, we have design 4B, which is pretty similar to the official design. I was told to make the B version thinner. Her hair became the twin tails you already know, adding the scrunchies to accent it. Her seifuku includes fingerless gloves, also the flower accessory in her shoulder, made it to the final version and making this one exceedingly Harukawa. This one's like super duper similar to our official design, so I'm kind of surprised I uh, included it in my uh, rankings since I don't usually include in the tier list the ones that look like super close to the official. But I mean, I like her official design, so <laughs> I guess I'll put this one in A rank as well. And now moving on to Himiko. We can see her in this cute little bear jacket. Ah, oh, she looks so cute. Her description reads, the first version of the magician sporting a space print bear parka that covers her hands as you can tell from the outfit choices and the bob cut, she was a character intended to look younger. The idea of having a space print on the clothes made it to Momota's final version. Ah, it looks so cute, the little, the little bear parka with the space stuff on it. I feel like it might make more sense 
if it was kind of like, you know, magic stuff rather than space stuff, but it's still adorable and I still love it. I can definitely see them like using the hoodie in a lot of her sprites, which I think would be super cute. Like whenever she feels more like lazy, she kind of like hides under the hoodie and they're like, Himiko, we, we, can, we can see you. And she's just like, no, you can't. I think it'd be super cute. I like this one a lot. I'm gonna put this one in S. It's adorable. Next up, we have this one, which looks a decent bit similar to the official one. The Magician's B counterpart set out the image for Final Yumino. Her short jacket and miniskirt is almost exactly the complete version. You can tell pretty much everything about her was already settled since version one. Even her willpowerless face is exactly like the Final Yumino. Yeah, like they mentioned in the description, it does look really similar to the final one, except it almost looks like she has like a beanie or like a sleep hat on rather than a witch hat. I do like the witch hat a decent bit more, but it's still a cute design overall, just a little bit more subdued compared compared to her uh, final one. So I'll put this one in B. And then we have another version of her in the bear hoodie, but this time she has a magic stick. Taking the face details and the bear theme parka from version one, I added the stick to version two, the magic item she needs. I made the part covering the head a tiny bit smaller, making her look much more like a high schooler. Her cheerful and bristly face is hugely different from the Yumino you know, but it has its own kind of charm. I didn't really notice in the previous one, she does seem a lot more upbeat in these designs. So I guess her personality might've been a decent bit different. I do like the idea of her hiding in in the, uh, in the hoodie though when she feels lazy. Since this one looks a lot like the other one that I really liked, I'll put it in S as well. Then finally we have Angie Yanaga. And this first one for Angie is definitely out there. They made her like a little kid in this one. The base design for Angie was conceived as the exotic girl. Having dark skin and silver hair is a common trope for characteristics of the Southern Islands. So by mixing in some artistic elements, I made this design that looks extremely younger than the final Angie. She looks like Sayonji kind of in the face. <laughs> I guess because she has like the little blush and like the very innocent eyes and stuff. I feel like she would have been like a million times creepier with the cult stuff if she did look like this, like a little kid. I feel like it's always like way creepier when you see like kids a part of a cult or something. Also that paintbrush is so big, it's literally bigger than her. <laughs> it would be kind of funny, I guess, to see her be like both creepy and cute. Like she'll have cute scenes where she's trying to paint with that enormous paintbrush and she's like falling over and tripping because it's like almost the same size as her. But then she'll have like a really creepy moments where she looks like the twins from The Shining, you know? Overall, I don't know, it's like a weird choice, but I do kind of like it. Um, I think I'll put this one in A. I think I overall do prefer her final version, but I do like the extra creepiness that having her look like a little kid would add to her character. Next up, we have this one, which looks a little bit closer to her final design, except the outfit is like totally different. She looks like a pilgrim or like a farmer to me or something, honestly. And this one reads, a design wearing a sundress at almost maximum length. Her dressing choices are vastly different from the final Angie, but her physique is much more like her than its A counterpart. I drew her because I was told to tone down on her eccentricity and shift the direction to a more elegant beach resort style. I can definitely see that they toned her down, but I think they toned her down a bit too much. I think her final official version is definitely like a good in-between between this original design and the one they ended up going with. I do think the final version captures the idea of her looking like an islander, but having like a more modern outfit as well, you know? Yeah, this one I think is a little too plain for me, so I'm gonna put it in C. And then finally, we have the very last design, which is a mixture of the uh, first two. The facial details from one B and the Samoe bikini combo from 1A. She still keeps the giant brush to indicate that she's an artist. I drew her with this puzzling face because she makes up her own bizarre words. She kind of reminds me of Starfire here with that kind of like doe-eyed look. <laughs> like the idea of her just saying a bunch of weird words that nobody knows what they mean. Even though this one definitely is a lot more loud, I think, I do feel like it's a good design overall and I definitely would have been happy if they would have chosen this design for her instead of the one that they went with. But at the same time, I can definitely see why they wanted to tone it down a little bit as well. But overall, I like it a good bit, so I'm gonna put this one in A2. And yeah, this is the final um, ranking that I have set up. Again, I'm not too hard to please. <laughs> I spent a lot in like S and A. The only time I really was super critical is with the bathing suits for Dagarapa S. But anyways, let me know if you guys agree or disagree with my rankings. And feel free to let me know what you guys think of these beta designs too. I always think the betas are really interesting to look at to see, you know, what could have been and maybe, you know, some ideas that they might reuse in the future if they decide to make another Dagarapa game. And again, if you want to read the description from the art book for all the different characters. I will be linking Kamud Kotino's translation in the description since I didn't read all of them, especially since a lot of the designs were very, very close to the official version. But yeah, thanks guys so much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you did enjoy it. And feel free to let me know if you guys have any requests regarding videos. I do have a few more ideas, but I may end up doing a couple of character analysis videos too since I'm feeling more up for it as well. And I know a lot of people are like <laughs> missing that series. Yeah, thanks guys for watching and I will see you real soon.